everyone, my name is Katie. Welcome back to my channel. Today is about how to write 50,000 words in one month, but as this is also a Preptober video, I just wanted to show y'all real fast on my website, um, if I can zoom that. I have a lot of resources on here for beats, for creating character arcs, for story structure, things like that that um, I've read in writing craft books. And so we got Save the Cat, Romancing the Beat, which is a romance one, um, Scene Cards, Story Genius, and Exercises. That's going to help for characters. Uh, Wired for Story, Writing Irresistible Kidlet, Story Structure Notes, My Story Structure Mashup, which is a beat sheet plus romancing the beat uh, structure. There are writing prompt ideas in here in case you do get stuck or need ideas. And then of course, How to Win NaNoWriMo. I wish I had thought about this ahead of time. I had other videos that I had privated such as outlines, um, edits, things like that. So I'm going to be remaking everything and coming out with them next year. But I also wanted to talk about where you can put your outline, where you can write all of this. I love writing in Notion. It's basically like it can be a Word doc in a program. You can put an Excel sheet in there, a Google doc, like everything. It's really, really cool. It's all in one place. I have a video about Notion, so go check that out. Um, but you can do uh, note cards if you like paper form. A lot of people I see make like an Act 1, Act 2, Act 3 board and put up sticky notes. Um, that way you can just like move them around. I like to use a Word document or um, Google Docs. I have a brainstorm doc that I add my CPs to so they can help me so my revision isn't a hot mess and like the first draft actually makes sense. <laughs> Try to get a roadmap for your idea. Do you know where to start and where to go so that November 1st doesn't come around and you're staring at a blank page like, <laughs> okay, where are we? And really, wherever you start, like just get the words going. It doesn't have to be, um, like if you need to write a whole bunch of backstory like you can tell yourself the story it's okay um, and just like just go but if like you want to start at some inciting incident or something whatever you are gonna click and just write the words with do that and if you get to the end and you're like I probably need to add some like um, setup then you can go back and add that in the beginning if you would like to not get stuck and um, say you're just like flowing with dialogue you don't really have to worry about the emotions or um, descriptions of what anyone's doing action wise if that's not helpful for you, if that's going to slow you down, um, it will add your word count if you do put that stuff in there. So if you are already thinking it and knowing what's happening, you can go ahead and add that then. I'm one of those people, my first half is totally fleshed out. I've got actions, descriptions, like emotions, internalizations, all the things. And then like I hit the midpoint and it's just like bare bones, fast draft thing. I don't know why, but that's just what happens. <laughs> and like once you figure out that stuff about yourself, it's like, it's okay. <laughs> I love using placeholders when I'm writing and I do get stuck. So in my last video, I told y'all to try to research ahead of time. So you have names, you have location names, um, you have your magic system, like whatever that you could just pull from. If you're still stuck, just put like, I do asterisks or um, I also like just highlighting that space and putting a comment, especially if I'm in Word or Google Doc, and add a comment of like, expand this scene here, um, backstory here, like whatever. That is so helpful for me to know where I need something. I will also make notes in Notion and I'll put like, I have scenes in there and I'll just write like in a chapter, work on this or I have like a revision column and so I know what I need to work on later. This is more helpful for when December comes but sometimes I do finish early in November and can actually reread and go through my book and add stuff then and so it works out. And with that like if you're stuck in like a whole scene or a chapter you know needs to happen just jot down what it might be what it's supposed to be about and then just move on to the next chapter. I also find that when I've like reached the end of my writing session for the day, like I try to write a chapter a day. Once I hit that um, and I start the next chapter, I'll just say like what's supposed to happen in that chapter. So when I come to it the next day, I'm not like having to reread what I just wrote and figure out what's going on. I can just be like, oh, okay, she goes to this house next and this drama, whatever, and I can just write that real easily. I know some people like to go back and edit their work. I would highly recommend not doing that until you've like completed your 50,000 words and then can go back and edit. Uh, it's just gonna slow you down. I would just like, if you decided that your side character is no longer there, your merging characters or whatever, make a note in your document that that is happening and then keep like the new changes going from there. So you only have to like rework that 
first bit. If you didn't really research a lot in your story, like you're not really sure about it, I would say if you're just keen on winning nano, um, to write what you know and write what you don't necessarily need to research. So my first book that I did during nano was a soccer high school story. It was my personal story, so it flowed really easily. I had to chop like all of my personal story out of it, but um, to win Nano, it was really easy. <laughs> if you're ever stuck in your story where um, things are just going too slow and like you've bored yourself, just throw in some tension, add some stakes, do a complete twist. Um, just add something to it that's going to propel it to that next scene and get you unstuck. I have already said I love making notes on the side or in Notion, and I love if I've added some type of breadcrumb throughout, I love adding um, a column for that or notes for that so that I know to keep uh, plugging this in throughout the story, and that way I know what plot holes that I need to close up at the end. I know what I need to reference to make y'all like smile at the end to be like, oh, that was from before. Like I love those moments so much. <laughs> so I like including them. And like I said, if you can get ahead word count wise and have that buffer, that's really helpful towards the end of the month. I know a lot of people still try to write over 50,000 K because they kind of feel, oh my God, why do I always do that? <laughs> over 50 K because they're trying to write like me. I try to write my first draft not just 50k and then I take a beat in December and then go back to it but if you can get ahead that's really gonna help you out other things for when you're stuck are writing prompts like on my uh, members page I'm at katienightly.com and then you can go to the coffee house enter the password if you're a newsletter subscriber and get all the access to this stuff so there's writing prompts Twitter also the nano account has writing prompts when they're doing their sprints they're like okay smell that like your character smells this and so you can add that in if you're stuck um, I don't like all of them because they never really fit my story and I don't want to have to go revise because it makes no sense <laughs> but uh, if you're stuck and you just want the words it might be helpful and you can even just write the words and then make a comment about it and be like this was a writing prompt um, streamline it to the story or delete or whatever. I also like bouncing ideas off my critique partners so if I am stuck or I'm like how do I get character uh, from this place to this place and maybe they can help me get unstuck for that. It doesn't really work in the moment because they're not like at my beck and call unfortunately <laughs> but um, you know if I need to take a break and brainstorm that out. Yeah, like if you do need a break you guys like seriously TV, books, um, video games, whatever jogs your brain, taking a walk, shower, nap, whatever. Um, just keep thinking about something and like eventually it'll click and you'll keep going. And then just like no distractions. I talked about this in the how and what to prep for nano about your like writing space. Um, whatever you need, like some people love working at coffee shops, um, restaurants, whatever. I cannot do that because of the noise, but um, just make sure you don't have any distractions because if you know your writing speed, like if you can write a thousand words in 30 minutes you know that maybe you just need a solid hour devoted to writing in your day and then you're done some things I forgot to say in the what to prep um, story portion which we'll be doing preptober prep with me next week but um, figuring out what tense or POV you want I'm now reading from my how to win a document on my website <laughs> but um, Tense and POV, if it's one POV, like your main character versus multiple. Multiple honestly might help you write more, but it depends on your story. What's the story arc or your MC's arc? And that's going to help if you do get stuck to be like, okay, what's my main character supposed to learn? Um, how can I push some opposing force on that? Or how can I help her, you know, get there or him um, or them? <laughs> it's nice to have a general idea of what your characters want and who they are that's what's driving your story so that's pretty important to know and that's going to help you if you do get stuck to kind of continue that and I think if y'all have seen my notion or if you haven't I show y'all um my structure in there for my character list at the bottom of my scenes and it's like want lie need personality um and things like that and that's going to help me keep track of all that too I love having everything in notion I hope it never goes away <laughs> but um wherever you like to put that I know people like um notebooks um story binders 
I forgot what they're called for some people. Um, a lot of people do Scrivener. Um, there's also Trello, but I found that you couldn't do as much as you can in Notion, so I switched over. Pinterest is really good for um, posting what your world looks like or your characters look like. So if you ever are like, I don't know how to describe this, you can just click over there and describe whatever picture you found that relates to your town or um, your main character or whatever. Um, I like having those aesthetics in my Pinterest board set up ahead of time. If you are writing descriptions, sorry this is bouncing everywhere. <laughs> if you are going to write descriptions, make sure you use the five senses. That way um, it will up your word count instead of you just being like everything you see. You can add, hear, touch, smell, um, and all of that. I also love if you're stuck, and I'll do a if you're stuck in November um, video I think, but just asking what if. So if your characters are like here and you're like, I don't know what happens next, be like, well, what if this happened? And then if it flows, just like go with that. And like I said before, it's okay to tell yourself the story in this one. Add a bunch of backstory, info dump all you want. Um, I find that it's helpful because then you know more about your story and your characters. And that actually helps you in revisions and for word count. <laughs> um, but even if you need to dump it here... Like, you're not going to be dumping it later. So it won't be like a whole document you need to redo, you know? And yeah, those are my tips for how to write 50,000 words in one month. Let me know if you have any tips that I didn't mention. And I hope that Preptober is going well for you and that you crush NaNoWriMo in November. Alright guys, be sure to check out my other videos this month and in November. And I will see y'all next time. Bye!